<laughs> Hello, Howard. <laughs> Natulog si Habi, and then my ribs is still marinating in the refrigerator. I still have one hour, and I've been reading. I want to share this story. It's very touching. I think this might be fitting for someone there who's lost hope, who's really sad, or fighting with a boyfriend or hubby. This might help. So I'm going to read it to you. Enjoy. Tugnaw. The Popcorn Can I met my first boyfriend, the boy of my dreams, in the summer of 1990. Our first date was on my birthday. God gave me the present I'd prayed for. Finally, I had a best friend, someone I could get silly with, snuggle, and kiss nonstop. I felt so lucky. All summer, we played and giggled our way through long walks, swims, and movies. On our last night of vacation, we left the theater arms linked. I loved the way his steps matched mine, the way he smelled of department store after shave, and kissed me when I least expected it. Way. <laughs> when we were halfway home, I tugged him under a tree and wrapped my arms around him. College is starting. Everything's going to change. New people. Studying, I said. He held me close and I cried. Afraid our enchanted summer would fall to fairy tale status one's responsibility kicked in. Lori, I love you, he said and stroked my hair. We'll get through it. <laughs> Joke. <laughs> we did. The first college grading period came and proved that all the time we'd studied together and traded highlighters paid off. We felt we were a powerful duo who could make it through anything. Months passed, then came Valentine's Day, and my heart soared. For the first time, I would have a Valentine. I dressed myself up in pink and carried a bouquet of balloons, a heartfelt card, and three pink carnations to his dorm room. To my dismay, he threw the flowers on the floor, sucked the helium out of the balloons, scanned the words on my card, and set it aside. You're acting like you don't want a girlfriend, I said. Maybe I don't. Hala na sukot world. Never expecting rejection, my romantic fantasy popped with each balloon. Uh, <laughs> never expecting rejection, <laughs> never expecting rejection, my romantic fantasy popped with each balloon he deflated. I cried for two months. Anything set me off. Lovers walking hand in hand, love stories on television love songs, running into his friends, catching a glimpse of him in the cafeteria. I'm so mad. I sat wrapped in a blanket by my dorm window for hours, hoping to see him come up the walk on his way to take me back. He didn't come. Chills ran through me and I pulled the blanket closer to trap his remaining warmth. My mother dropped off an enormous can of popcorn. I shared it with friends, yet it seemed to be bottomless. Many nights that, that was all I ate because I couldn't bear seeing him in the cafeteria. One day, I pried the lid off the can to find one 
lonely piece of popcorn rattling around in the vastness of the empty container. Sana lang nahabilin, hala. What to do with the empty can? Throw it away? No, it's too pretty. I feel like I'm down to my last kernel too, I thought. I decided to fill the emptiness with anything that touched my heart. My Japanese roommate fashioned an origami crane from rich red and gold paper that she made just for me. I put the crane in my can. Rattle, rattle. The next day, a letter came. Thank goodness for my grandma. I read it and quickly dropped it into the big tin. Notes from friends, fortunes from cookies that gave me hope, photographs that people gave me, other symbols of friendship and kindness, and the first bloom of spring all found their way into the can. She collected them. On a rainy spring evening, during a game of Pictionary, my ex-boyfriend showed up. To make it worse, one of the other guys paired him with me for the game. We drew until we won, once again, proving ourselves a powerful duo, yet something had changed. When he tried to kiss me at the end of the evening, I turned away. You made your choice, I said. The sureness in my voice surprised both of us. Before bed that night, I drew a stick figure of him in farewell and placed it into the popcorn can. It's still in there somewhere, along with all the special mementos that bring to mind people I love. What? Before bed that night, I drew a stick figure of him in farewell and placed it into the popcorn can. It's still in there somewhere along with all the special mementos that bring to mind people I've loved. My treasure chest eventually overflowed with blessings and so has my life. It's all because of the popcorn can. Life is difficult and sometimes we get really depressed and we get anxiety and we think it's the end of the world, but you just take one day, one step at a time per day and someday you'll look back and you're okay. So think about it. Don't lose hope. Live day to day, one step at a time, carefully. Okay, world. Well, aloha and let me check on those ribs. <laughs>